Well, good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're gonna to give everyone just a few more minutes to join and we'll be getting started. I wanna thank everyone at the Cruise Web, uh, the outstanding travel professionals that are there to take care of you uh, from beginning to end on your travel uh, with Viking uh, and letting uh, us be your, your host tonight. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Richard Sims. I'm the Director of National Accounts and I work with the team at the Cruise Web uh, to just assist them in taking care of you, our valued client and our guest. Uh, so we uh, again wanna welcome you to tonight's presentation. We're gonna be talking about the Great Lakes, a destination that obviously is close to home, but really uh, has never been fully discovered, I guess would be a good way to, to put it. Uh, it's a destination with a lot of great uh, things to experience, to see, to do. Uh, and we're gonna go through the various itineraries that we have at Viking tonight and uh, talk about the different ways you can explore the Great Lakes and stay close to home. So just a little bit about Viking. Um, hopefully you've heard the Viking name. We started on the rivers of Europe over 20 years ago. Uh, we started ocean cruising about five years ago and we quickly went over uh, not only our, our guests and travelers, but also the critics. We've won uh, best uh, ocean cruise line for small ship five years in a row with Travel and Leisure Magazine, for example. And now we uh, are building a new ship, the Viking uh, Octanus, which is gonna be a new expedition ship for us. And that's gonna allow us now to travel to all the continents out there, including Antarctica, with some polar ex uh, experiences uh, to Antarctica and even the Arctic. But of course, today we're gonna be talking about the Great Lakes and staying closer to home. So just like on our river, just like on our ocean, uh, it's very important for you to understand what uh, we do at Viking. And one of the things that we do is really try not to be everything to everyone. We focus on uh, those mature couples, English speaking, uh, nearly 90% of our guests come from the US or Canada, uh, but they're guests that really want to explore, to understand and immerse themselves in the history and the culture uh, and experience that geography of the destination they're traveling to. And we're gonna be doing that as well on the Viking expedition ships. Now, I wanna be totally upfront. Now, this is not gonna be a, a, an expedition type cruise uh, in the Great Lakes where you're gonna be uh, you know, roughing it and, and having to get into Zodiacs or kayaks or mountain biking or hiking or climbing, you know, absolutely not. Uh, that's gonna be something that we'll talk about throughout the uh, presentation today. Uh, but Viking expedition in the Great Lakes, is gonna be really re you know, relying on those traditional uh, Viking experiences uh, for you to understand the history and the culture again of the destination you're traveling to. Um, because we are a destination oriented cruise line and we want to continue that with our Great Lakes exploration uh, and offer a highly inclusive product like we do uh, on the rivers and oceans as well. By doing that, we're able to pass on our savings to you and be an efficient operator uh, with our partnerships with the airlines, uh, hotels and our pre and post land packages. Just the true value that we're able to offer with our, our, our cruise pricing, we really are providing you an amazing uh, vacation experience. And of course, at the end of the day, it comes down to our, our crew and our team. Uh, on board. Uh, that's what our guests tell us time and time again, that it's our amazing crew that makes them want to come back uh, time and time again. So when you look at uh, Viking, uh, as we get into, uh, you know, the Great Lakes and, and what we're going to be doing, you know, again, from rivers to the oceans and now expeditions, we really want to explore the world in comfort and provide a, an incredible experience for our guests in the Great Lakes that has never been really offered before uh, and offer a game-changing type ship uh, that uh, the Viking Octanus will be when it comes into the Great Lakes. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, some of those features uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, but again, just like our, our river and ocean ships, these uh, expedition ships are going to be focusing on the outside, uh, those panoramic views, and really get you as close as we can to the nature, the fauna, the flora, and the incredible scenery uh, that is the Great Lakes that you'll experience. Now, when we talk about the Viking difference, you know, one of the things that we're going to be doing on this is that we have partnered with several uh, scientific, uh, scientific um, organizations out there. And in the Great Lakes, especially with NOAA, we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, testing on, on board. There's actually going to be scientists on board. So they'll be doing uh, talks along with our guest lectures and rest, uh, resident historians. So we're going to have some really unique features with the science, uh, you know, aspect of this journey. Uh, and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, you know, we're going to be traveling through some of the most important uh, bird uh, breeding and bird um, areas for, uh, you know, those migrating birds. 
uh, on this uh, itinerary, uh, on some of these itineraries, I should say, it's not just one itinerary, it's multiple itineraries. So you're really going to have uh, an added aspect from the scientific partnerships that we'll have on board uh, for you to experience. Now, just like you have on the ocean ships, you're going to have a variety of dining options available from our main dining room in the restaurant to our incredible uh, Italian restaurant, Manfredi's, the World Cafe, which is more of our, uh, you know, a la carte or al fresco dining experience, uh, Aquavit Bar as well. And then Momsen's Norwegian Deli is really a unique uh, feature to Viking that it's our, our chairman, Tor, uh, Tor Hagen's uh, mother's recipes and a China pattern that he grew up on that it was his mother's uh, as well. And so there's a lot of rich tradition and history there from the family, uh, but great waffles and open face sandwiches and soups uh, that you're going to find in Momsen's Norwegian Deli. It's a guest favorite um, uh, for our guests when they travel on board our ocean ships. And of course, you'll have 24 hour options available for you uh, on board as well. Now, when we talk about value, uh, you know, definitely want to point out that uh, on a, a traditional Viking cruise, river, ocean, uh, you know, you're going to have one short excursion included in every port of call, and then we'll have optional experiences at an additional fee. One unique feature on the Great Lakes is that we're going to have multiple options for you in every port that are already included in your cruise fare. So not only will you get that one short excursion, you'll have multiple short excursions to choose from that will be included in your cruise fare. So I only believe there's you know, like literally one handful of, of some experiences that may not be included that there'll be an additional charge. Um, but for the most part, the overwhelming majority of the shore experiences are gonna be included in your cruise fare, which gives you more options uh, to go out and explore and experience and immerse yourself as, uh, as much as you want to be immersed in what interests you. Of course, all your onboard meals are included. There's no uh, charges for any of the alternative dining experiences. Uh, wine, beer, and soft drinks are always included with lunch and dinner while on board, um, especially coffees and teas, bottled water, that's all available for you at no charge. Uh, and then finally, free Wi-Fi is also included, and, and that free Wi-Fi just allows you to stay connected uh, to family and friends back home. Now, of course, uh, one of the other things that we do that uh, our guests love is that when your travel advisor at the, uh, the cruise web uh, you know, gives you a quote on that cruise, that cruise rate always includes port charges and government taxes and fees. So there's not going to be a cruise fare plus government taxes plus, uh, plus, 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 as we like to say. So it's really a great value when you look at it uh, that Viking is, is providing. Now, something else is very important for you to know is that when you're cruising with us, uh, there's certain things that we definitely are not. And, and again, it goes back to our philosophy of not trying to be everything to everyone. There's no casinos on board uh, these ships, uh, no children under the age of 18. Uh, you know, there's no uh, charge to go into the, uh, enjoy the spa. Uh, you know, we really have a lot of uh, a variety of, of inclusions that you can see there that uh, really allows you to, to sit back and relax. You know, uh, another guest favor is no formal nights, butlers or white glove service. You know, this is a very casual, uh, you know, incredible, you know, casual elegance, you know, uh, environment on board and, uh, you know, just allows you to sit back and relax and, and again, enjoy your vacation uh, and your cruise with Viking. So when we look at the Great Lakes in Canada, you know, what we thought we'd do as, as we presented this uh, tonight as uh, talking to the, uh, the team at the cruise web uh, is really kind of just breaking down the different itineraries. And instead of us going through all the ports of call, uh, we're going to just highlight some of the, uh, the ports and things you're going to see on the three different itineraries that we offer. So, of course, the Great Lakes, and people have asked us, why do you want to cruise to the Great Lakes? Well, we feel like it's a very undertapped and underserved market. Uh, it has a lot of amazing places uh, to visit, a lot of incredible uh, parks and national parks. Uh, we always think of Alaska, uh, and, you know, the last frontier and, and going to Alaska to see the wildlife. But you have those experiences there, um, you know, in, in some of these incredible places like Georgian uh, Bay that we'll be talking about that provides incredible opportunities to spot wildlife and again the migratory birds if you're a bird watcher. Um, but really those iconic cities that you'll experience like Toronto, uh, Milwaukee, Chicago, um, um, Detroit, but then those smaller, uh, more quaint towns uh, and experiences like Mackinac Island. Uh, so you really got a, a, a wide range of experiences on every itinerary. So it's a destination that in our research, guests told us they, they wanted to go uh, explore. They were interested in going and exploring uh, the Great Lakes. They have not been happy with the 
uh, the few cruise options that were up there. And so by bringing the biking difference and the biking experience to uh, the Great Lakes, it really provides you an opportunity to travel in, in style and comfort the Viking way uh, there in the Great Lakes. Now, the, the, one of the big things that, uh, that allows us to do this is that we purposely built this brand new expedition ship, the Viking Octanus, uh, it's going to be launching in January of 2022, and the ship was uh, built to be a little bit more narrow. And the reason is we wanted to fit through the Welland Canal locks and, and be able to get into the Great Lakes. And that is what it's going to do uh, when it uh, you know accesses the Great Lakes. Now, when we talk about um, you know the Great Lakes again, it's a, the wildlife are abound, uh, you know, are abundant. Uh, you're going to see everything from the wolves to the bears. Uh, to the moose and uh, the bald eagles and again the, just countless hundreds of, of different uh, types of birds uh, again with the bird migration that they're going to experience uh, but again when we look at the Great Lakes overall you know it's really about again those uh, iconic historic cities that I was talking about earlier um, those places that have that deep connection to nature um, you know it really is truly an undiscovered area and uh, I hope that uh, after tonight's uh, presentation this will help you in understanding more about the Great Lakes and lead you to want to go and explore this uh, this truly amazing part of North America um, you know just uh, in addition to these these incredible cities quaint towns uh, the wildlife you also have an area that's rich in culture uh, there's some incredible world-class museums that you're going to be able to experience um, and a lot of great First Nations uh, traditions and history of the First Nations uh, and the Native Americans. So uh, again, a lot to offer here. Now, the first itinerary, we, we offer three itineraries and all three uh, can be combined. So you can do a back-to-back -back or even a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cruise and do all three. Now, the only port or town that you're gonna be visiting uh, that would be a repeat is Mackinac Island. That is the only repeat uh, when you do an itinerary back-to-back. So the first itinerary we're gonna talk about is starting in Toronto. You'll go through the Welland Canal and experience Niagara Falls, and then on eventually making your way to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And here's a map of that area to kind of give you that visual of what you're going to be experiencing. So after Niagara Falls, we'll go into Point Pelee. That's a huge uh, bird migration area uh, up to Detroit, into Lake Huron, uh, Mackinac Island, uh, Traverse City, and then into Milwaukee. So. This has been one of our most popular itineraries out of the three for sure. And uh, you'll see why here with a few of the places we're gonna highlight. Now, of course, Toronto, great city there. Uh, you know, amazing, beautiful waterfront, lots of uh, great experiences you can do there. You can even go over and do a, a wine tour in the wine region across uh, from uh, Toronto, uh, but a great waterfront area and definitely a place you're gonna wanna go in and spend a couple extra days uh, before you join your, your cruise. Now with Niagara Falls, uh, you know, you can experience that uh, from up above in the viewing platforms or you can get down, uh, you know, at uh, sea level, so to speak, and enjoy, uh, you know, the amazing, uh, you know, feel the, the, the thunder and the rumble of the, uh, and how powerful the waterfalls are by getting up and, you know, definitely up close and personal with it, um, with the, uh, you know, the, the misty, uh, my mind just went blank, the misty uh, boat ride there. Of, uh, of Niagara Falls that you can experience. But again, uh, just a great way to start, uh, you know, the itineraries after going through the Well and Canal Locks and being able to go in and spend uh, the time in Niagara Falls uh, there before continuing on. Now I mentioned Point Pelee and Point Pelee is one of the, the most important uh, migratory bird areas um, in North America. Uh, is a stopover point and over 350 different species have been spotted. Uh, and it's really a, a, a big sandbar, a tiny sand spit that uh, juts into the northwestern corner of Lake Erie. And we're gonna have opportunities to bird watch there by canoe, by kayaking. Uh, you're gonna have um, uh, opportunities to take a nice leisurely hike along the different uh, park trails that are there. Uh, again, to see the flora and the fauna. Um, the, you know, walk through the, the beautiful forest there. Uh, we'll have Zodiac experiences and uh, you know, rigid inflatable boats, which are larger boats, uh, which I'll show you uh, here later in the presentation uh, that you can get out and enjoy. So again, this is gonna be, you know, one of those, if you wanna get out and explore this beautiful park area and this uh, important migratory stopover point, you'll have a wide range of ways uh, to do just that. So that's just a couple of highlights of that first itinerary. Now, the next itinerary I want to mention is our Milwaukee to Thunder Bay. It's called our Great Lakes Explorer. Uh, so this is going to be 
again, visiting Mackinac Island, going into Georgian Bay. We're gonna be spending three days in Georgian Bay and we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we'll transit a set of locks uh, to get up into uh, the Thunder Bay area. So again, a lot of uh, great experiences here with uh, you know more of the outdoors. Now this itinerary definitely is gonna be more uh, on the outdoor side because we're gonna be spending three days there in Georgian Bay. And Georgian Bay uh, consists of three small uh, quaint towns, Killarney, Little Current, and Parry Sound. Uh, and then you'll, uh, again, you'll go to Mackinac Island through the Sulox into Lake Superior and ending in Thunder Bay. Now, Mackinac Island is definitely going to be one of the highlights, uh, you know, of, of any of the crews that you're on. Uh, of course, you know, with Mackinac, it, it just provides uh, kind of a step back in time, you know, no motor vehicles here. Uh, you know, take a horse and carriage ride, go kayaking, go on a hike, uh, you know, head up to the famous uh, Grand Hotel, you know, sit uh, on the, uh, the famous ports there in a rocking chair and, you know, take in the sights, maybe have high tea there in the afternoon uh, at the Grand Hotel. Of course, this is a, an amazing hotel that's uh, on the uh, uh, Registry of Historic Places, uh, and it's, you know, definitely the, the, the thing to do um, is to go and relax there. Uh, you can head over to Fort Mackinac uh, as well, which is uh, one of the oldest surviving uh, Revolutionary War fortresses that are still in existence today. Uh, so just a very relaxing day here on Mackinac Island. Uh, again, a lot of great things to do, great variety, uh, and strolling just the town or taking a horse carriage ride or you know, a little bike ride throughout the town as well. So lots of things to do here on Mackinac Island. And then Georgian Bay, and I mentioned Georgian Bay. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a UNESCO World Network Biosphere Reserve. It's often considered the sixth great lake. It's often referred to as the, the sixth great lake um, because it boasts over 30,000 islands and over 1,200 miles of shoreline. And we're gonna spend three full days here. Now, again, you'll have three small quaint towns of Little Current, uh, Parry Sound, and Killarney to visit and explore, but then you'll also have opportunities for kayaking, biking, uh, hiking, and you know these are easy hikes. Uh, these aren't uh, you know uh, brutal hiking uh, experiences by any means. But this is kind of a nature lovers' paris, paradise, an outdoor lovers' paradise. So again, if you're looking for more of the outdoors and just breathing in that fresh air and seeing the wildlife, you've got that opportunity here at, at Georgian Bay uh, for sure. And then you'll come into Thunder Bay. You'll spend a full day and an evening there and overnight on board the ship in Thunder Bay uh, before uh, you know, disembarking the following day. Now, when you book uh, your, your travel through the cruise web and you choose to book your air through Viking, of course, we'll pick you up at the airport and transfer you to the ship or to your hotel if you're doing a pre or post land extension. And the same thing after uh, when the cruise comes to an end, if, if you have that transfer with us, we'll transfer you over to the airport for you, um, you know, just a very seamless experience. So depending on if you're staying, uh, you know, before coming in early or staying late, you know, we can uh, work with the, the team at the travel, uh, the cruise web to take care of you and, uh, and add on that pre or post land extension, um, you know, uh, if needed. Now Thunder Bay again provides some uh, really some great experiences here. Uh, you can do a, a really nice, easy walk through the old growth forest there um, along the shores of Lake Superior. Uh, tons of, of, of wildlife here, uh, especially bears, uh, incredible rock formations and just beautiful coastline and uh, waterfalls. Uh, just a great uh, you know, way to end the, the, the cruise there at Thunder Bay uh, for you. Now, the third itinerary we do, we start off in Thunder Bay and we come back to Milwaukee, but it doesn't repeat the same ports other than Mackinac Island. So if you'd rather start in Thunder Bay and end in Milwaukee uh, and do a little bit different itinerary, maybe you don't want to do as much outdoor stuff, then this is a great uh, opportunity for you because again, we're overnight in Thunder Bay, giving you the full day and evening uh, that following day or the, that evening and the next full day to explore uh, the Thunder Bay area. Then we'll go into Duluth, Apostle Islands, and so on, uh, ending up in Milwaukee. So here's again a map of the area that we'll be traveling through. So this will give you a, a little bit different uh, type of itinerary. Uh, and again, focusing on more of those iconic cities, um, you know, along with those smaller um, places like Houghton uh, there in Michigan uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Upper Peninsula. Of, uh, of Michigan. So uh, again, a different type of itinerary, lots of things to do here. 
Uh, you've got, uh, you know, great uh, aquarium there in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, that's uh, you know, very famous and popular uh, with tourists. Um, but really what I would do is, is head over to the Hawk Ridge Observatory and really just uh, witness the raptors here because they're, they're this is a, a central point for the raptors. They've got a great observatory here. Um, the ridge's edge, uh, you know, just standing there on the ridge's edge and looking at, uh, you know, the, the raptors uh, fly uh, above, you know, and below you uh, because you're up so high. But the, uh, the Hawk Ridge Bird, Bird Observatory is just a great experience um, for you to uh, consider there uh, while you're in Duluth. Now, the Paulsa Islands is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those destinations, again, that uh, you want to get out and explore with an easy walk through uh, the, the, the amazing forests um, that are there or get out and enjoy the coastline, uh, again, by boat or by kayak. Uh, just absolutely great, um, you know, kayaking here, getting in one of our uh, rigid boats or uh, Zodiacs and, and cruising along the shore, again, looking for wildlife. Uh, but the Paulsa Islands are absolutely stunning. Uh, great area, again, to just get out and breathe that, uh, that air. And, uh, you know, this is where you're going to find a lot of lighthouses. Um, you've got, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the most, uh, you know, lighthouses in a, a specific area here. Uh, and the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. So there's a lot of great things to experience um, at the Apostle Islands. Now, Houghton uh, is another smaller, quaint uh, place that you can go and experience. Um, there, uh, it's, it's located on the Keweenaw Peninsula there in Michigan, and it's uh, known for its deposits of uh, native copper, uh, so much so that it's, it has one of the uh, largest, most extensive known copper uh, deposits in the world um, uh, there in the, the Keweenaw Peninsula at, uh, at Houghton. So uh, beautiful little uh, hikes, again, easy hikes uh, to these beautiful waterfalls uh, traveling through the forest um, there in Houghton that you can experience. They've got a great uh, historic town that they've, you know, painstakingly restored and, and kept. And, you know, uh, you know the, the tour that we'll have for you, you can go over to the, uh, the former mining um, plant, as you see here, and, and kind of just step back in time and uh, see how they were mining the copper from that particular area. So uh, uh, that is Houghton uh, in uh, Michigan. Now, we'll do the, uh, the, the itinerary that I spoke of first, the Toronto to Milwaukee. We'll now do that in reverse. So you'll start in Milwaukee and go back to Toronto uh, at the end of the season. So you can do that in reverse, and then it will combine, or you can do this uh, on its own, a Canadian Discovery Cruise. Now this one we've got listed here is New York to Toronto, but we do a Toronto back to uh, the New York area as well um, at the end of the season. So these cruises are operating between roughly May and September of 2022. Uh, and we've got uh, good availability left, although some sailings are about uh, to be sold out, are very close. And so you definitely want to check with your uh, cruise web uh, travel professional, uh, you know, to, to on a date that you might be interested in and check availability. But this is a, another itinerary where you can do in the spring coming up to Toronto or uh, in the fall uh, at the end of the season where again, it's a, that kind of traditional uh, Canada, New England coastline, uh, just absolutely great uh, ports of call. Absolutely love Prince Edward Island and Charlottetown is one of my favorite cities there. Uh, here's a, a map of that. Uh, again, because of the ship size, you know, we're able to pass by Montreal and continue on uh, where most ships uh, have to stop. A lot of ships nowadays are, are too tall to even go under the bridges to get to Montreal. So they have to stop in Quebec City. But again, with our ship size, we're able to access uh, Lake Ontario go all the way into Toronto. But you can see very port intensive. This is a great itinerary if you want to explore, uh, you know, the, uh, the Canada and New England area. Although you're not getting a lot of New England here. So I probably shouldn't say Canada, New England, that's a habit. So uh, just that uh, amazing, uh, you know, Canadian Maritimes and uh, the St. Lawrence River uh, experience here on this itinerary. Just a couple of ports I would want to point out. Absolutely love Halifax, uh, Peggy's Cove here and the famous Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, uh, the most photographed lighthouse uh, in, in all of Canada. Uh, you also have the amazing Halifax Citadel there and the uh, uh, kind of walking in the regimental history of the 78th Highlanders. Uh, and the Halifax Citadel was built back in 1856. They, they shoot off a cannon there at 12 noon. So make sure you're not uh, walking past uh, outside the fortress uh, and uh, have, uh, have uh, you know, your, your jump out of your skin when that uh, 12 noon uh, cannon is shot. 
but you can be a, you know, a, a soldier for the day and go over and put on the kilt and uh, the red coat and uh, be a Highlander for, uh, for the day there, which is a lot of fun. But uh, again, that's uh, the Halifax Citadel there. And of course, the other big city I wanted just to briefly mention uh, is Quebec City. I mean, just absolutely amazing. Of course, the Chateau Frontenac you see here, uh, the famous uh, Chateau, uh, or the Citadel that you see on the hill there to the top left. Um, but the old town down below and its charming cobblestone streets and uh, just amazing French architecture and the signs. I mean, you feel like you've been, you know, transported over to the, um, uh, over to France while you slept at night. Uh, just amazing experience there in the old town uh, and the new town up above uh, is, is great to, uh, to visit as well. So those are just a couple of the different itineraries or the itineraries that we're going to be offering in the Great Lakes uh, and that repositioning cruise around the Maritimes of Canada. Uh, just a couple of few pictures of the uh, ship here I wanted to share with you again. The Viking Octanus, small ship, only 378 guests uh, on board this ship. Uh, brand new, being built in uh, January of 2022. Again, 378 guests, uh, blew over 30,000 tons. Uh, and this is our expedition ship. So in the wintertime, it'll be in the polar regions of Antarctica or the Arctic. Uh, it's got a great um, a set of uh, features that uh, provide the ultimate in Viking comfort from my dynamic positioning uh, to the fin stabilizers, but really the U-tanks, which allow us to, uh, when we're stationary, uh, if we're having a tender, for example, there's not that traditional rocking back and forth. Uh, it's uh, going to be balanced because of the U-turn, uh, the U-tanks that we have, and allows uh, you to just enjoy being on the ship in ultimate ultimate comfort. Now we've got beautiful uh, public areas here in restaurants, the atrium area uh, here, and a lot of great nooks and crannies to curl up and read a book, uh, have a glass of wine. The Ala is our uh, presentation room. Now this uh, theater is amazing because this is on the back part of the ship. Uh, this screen that you see here actually raises up like a garage door and it opens up to these incredible floor to ceiling glass windows and you step out of that, uh, you can go through the doors and you step out onto the aft portion or stern portion of the vessel uh, and sit here at the, uh, the Finza Terrace um, and just take in the incredible beauty again that's around you in uh, the Great Lakes and of course this is an image of the ship as we would see it in Antarctica. So I can assure you it doesn't have those, those type of snow and ice in the Great Lakes that you'll be experiencing with us. The Explorer's Lounge is always a guest favorite on our ocean ships and it, we expect it to be on this ship as well. Uh, two decks forward with incredible 270 degree views, floor to ceiling glass windows, absolutely beautiful. Our Aquavi Terrace indoor and outdoor um, area to sit and relax. And again, just look out at the beauty. I mean. Uh, we really focus on building ships that allow that natural light uh, to come in and, you know, and uh, allow you to, to view uh, your surroundings, uh, you know, without any obstructions. Now we've got a plunge pool in the back. Uh, this three pools, set of three pools, will all be different temperatures, um, kind of uh, different type experience for you, but they're just plunge pools to, to uh, you know, to dip in and uh, cool off if, uh, you know, it's a hot day. Uh, but again, lots of deck space on the ship to take in, um, you know, the scenery. Uh, we have a wonderful spa with, of course, a, a sauna as well as a, a snow grotto on board, a fitness center for you to experience and uh, relax. And of course, the expedition equipment. So this is the hangar. And so the, uh, the boat on the right, that is called a rib or rigid inflatable boat. So we have a unique feature on our ships that others do not. And that is you'll board the ship of uh, the rib there. Um, while it's inside the ship. So this is basically, you would just walk right onto the rib uh, out of the elements uh, and very easy. And then it launches from the back. It just kind of goes down a platform into the water. Our Zodiacs will be launched there on the side of the vessel. Uh, but the hangar is very unique to, uh, to Viking. And again, we'll have some expedition equipment here, but there's so many great experiences to do in, in all these ports, uh, towns and cities you'll be visiting as well. So it's, uh, again, not just an expedition cruise. This has got uh, those traditional, you know, ocean uh, cruising type components out there that uh, you're going to really enjoy being able to experience uh, the Viking difference on this uh, destination. Now we have, uh, you know, no verandas on this, on this ship uh, per se. They are balcony, Nordic balcony staterooms, as we like to call them. So the glass uh, comes down and, and forms a, uh, you know, a, a half you know, half window for lack of a better word and uh, kind of that infinity uh, balcony. And so you don't lose any of the indoor living space. There's another picture of that there. Um, so you don't give up any of that outdoor or indoor uh, living space. And so you can, uh, you know, raise and lower the window as needed. 
uh, and enjoy uh, you know, that Nordic uh, balcony uh, concept. Now, our bathrooms are very spacious. We have large showers. They're you know, walk-in showers with glass doors, uh, you know, heated floors, uh, antifog, um, you know, mirrors. You've got uh, you know, wonderful bathroom amenities by Freya, uh, you know, plush bathrooms and slippers. Staterooms, regardless of the category, are going to provide a lots of uh, storage space and uh, just a great amenities. I mean, this is your home away from home, you know, king size plush beds uh, that we're famous for. Uh, so talk to your uh, uh, travel professional with the cruise web to determine what category is going to be perfect for you, uh, because each category is going to be a little bit more expensive, yes, but there's value as part of that from maybe a mini bar set up in your stateroom to uh, you know, priority uh, a dining reservations, short excursions, etc. So again, uh, speak to your travel advisor at the cruise web to find out what is the perfect uh, category for you. So with that, I want to uh, thank you uh, again. Absolutely great uh, itineraries uh, to look at and consider for exploring the Great Lakes. Definitely encourage you to look at your um, or speak to your uh, travel professional at the cruise web and allow them to uh, really just, you know, provide you the ultimate, uh, in, you know, in, in service and, and selection of what itinerary is going to uh, best fit you. Um, but, you know, we really are um, excited about cruising to the Great Lakes um, and uh, really look forward to you joining us, uh, hopefully uh, in the very near future. Now, I just want to see if there's any questions. It looks like we've got one or two here. Um, so, so basically they're asking uh, the time of year. And so, yes, yeah, so, so uh, you may have asked that question before I, I mentioned that because I did mention it a little bit later in the presentation, but uh, roughly May through September is when we'll be uh, you know, traveling in the Great Lakes. And of course, depending on what you're interested in, uh, like the birds, I mean, you definitely, uh, in the bird migrations, you definitely want to, uh, you know, just check on the timing for that. And we, and our res agents, I'm sure can assist the travel, uh, the, the uh, travel professionals at the cruise web on that. Um, and then there's one other question. Yeah, the uh, question about uh, pre and post land extensions. You know, we offer a, a wide range, about eh, 60, 65% of our guests always do a pre or post land. So I definitely would encourage you to do that. So again, whether it's in Toronto or Milwaukee or Thunder Bay, uh, you, you, know, you definitely want to linger. You want to spend a little extra time there and uh, to relax and enjoy it. So hopefully that helps you there. Um, but again, I want to thank you for uh, joining us uh, today and uh, look forward to seeing you on Viking in the very near future. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your week and uh, you know, stay safe. Take care.